ओके सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द लेक्चर नंबर आई थिंक 16 ऑफ गैस डायनामिक्स लेक्चर सीरीज सो आई हैव वी हैव डिस्कस द ऑब्लिक शॉक वेव थ्योरी एंड थीटा बीटा एम रिलेशन सो नाउ आई हैव टेकन द थीटा बीटा एम ग्राफ इन दिस टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड ओके एंड वी विल ऑल्सो सॉल्व द कंप्लीट ऑब्लिक शॉक वेव एंड एट द एंड यू बी एबल टू नाउ यू विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व योर ऑल गेट प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू थीटा बीटा एम रिलेशन और ऑब्लिक शॉक वेव आई होप दिस विल मेक यू मोर अंडरस्टैंड of using theta by time graph okay so whatever we have discussed now i am going to use the concept from those okay so okay now if you read the question the theta by time m graph this is theta by time graph is given for upstream mac number 2 so this is for mac number 2 okay this is for mac number 2 is reproduced below for 10 degree it is Ten degree deflection angle. What is the approximate shock angle for weak and strong? So that's what the question is asking. So it was having a it it is a M M C Q question. It was M S M C Q question. There was four option. I have not taken those, but it's fine. So mm, yes. So if you see now, you can check. Uh, I told you you need to see the graph. So they will not provide the uh, physical graph in gate exam, guys. so if they ask you to come if they if it if will they if they will give this kind of question they will provide this kind of question in uh, this kind of graph in the question itself so you need to understand and you, you need to interpolate the values okay so if you see for mac number 2 they are asking what is the shock uh, angle for weak and strong so if you do remember we were using this notation uh strong shock weak shock we were using this notation right let me be more precise to this okay so this was weak shock angle this was strong shock angle i need to go with basic guys that's why it is taking time so now i'll see for 10 degrees okay So ten degrees is this line. So if you okay, let me do this. Ten degrees this line, and I'm cutting this graph at two this uh, this two points. And if you do this, if you go to the shock wave angle, shock wave angle axis, this is the values you should be having. Okay, so this will be approximately okay. So if you see, I was saying that I was having the angle, I was having the options right. So if you see this, for ten degree, we are cutting at these two points. Which correspond to this shock angle, and this correspond to this shock angle. So as I told you, this upper leg, upper leg corresponds to the strong shock angle, and this corresponds to the weak shock angle. I hope this thing is clear. Now, if you see, this is approximately, this is approximately, okay. So the approximately it will be around. If this is, this will be, uh, uh, this will be approximately thirty nine. Okay, so this will be approximately thirty nine, thirty nine degree. That means weak shock will be thirty nine degree. And if you see the strong shock, this will be around eighty four. If you see the options, you can do this. This is eighty four degree. Okay, that's what we can do. It cannot be eighty four guys, because we need to answer for weak and strong. So weak has to be lesser. So this option is gone. Strong has to be more. So this option is altogether gone. Okay, no, no shock wave gone. This is no. Okay, let me explain this also. And if you see this option, this is not possible. Can you tell me why? This is touching at these two points. This is for zero degree. If you compute for zero degree, theta equals to zero, you will get two shock angle, which is your mu angle. Mu angle is nothing but thirty degree. You are getting thirty degree here. You see, and this is your uh, strong shock wave angle. This is ninety degree. So this you are touching at this point. So, but we have given some theta angle, which is inclination angle. Uh, this is for theta equals to ten degree. So, we'll be getting these two shock wave angles. But in reality, we'll be getting this as a. Let me draw draw this. But in reality, we'll be getting this as a. What guys? Weak shock wave angle. So, if you see, if I draw precisely, this will be like this. And similarly here. So, this is your shock wave angle from the axis from this. axis so this will be your 39 degree similarly this will be 
39 degree so what you call this as a weak oblique shock wave weak oblique shock wave so upper shock wave called it as a right running shock which is not required as of now but still for just for completion i'm giving this this is called it as a okay i think i'm doing reverse i think so okay okay yes i'm doing the so this is called it as a left running shock wave upper one is and this is called it as a right running shock wave so just for completion take i have given this strong shock you will not get but in question they have asked for a um, uh, shock wave for weak and strong so we have given both uh, we have find out both but in reality but in exam you need to answer for weak shock wave which i have already told you okay i hope this is clear i think if not easily you can ask this for uh, i want to say that no shock wave you will get no shock wave when the condition is condition is your your the angle with at which you are operating it must be more than the theta max theta max means let's say this is uh, this corresponds to let's say 22.5 degree let's half let's say 23 to be more precise i think this is 23 for till 23 from 0 to 23 you will get attached shock solution because you are under this envelope but if you go beyond 23 if you go beyond 23 you will get detached shock wave so that's the condition for detached shock no shock wave or detached shock wave no shock wave means you are not having any shock wave no but i explained you the uh, when we, uh, when we can have a detached shock wave so this is the case of detached shock wave i hope this thing is clear let's go to the next question okay now come to this question now this is the theory question i kept so if you can answer this you can pause this lecture and you can answer this question so for those who are not able to do this let's read this if an oblique shock is broke into components that are normal and tangent to the wave front so see guys it's different uh, wordings wave front they have said they have not said the oblique shock wave the tangential mach number as the flow passes through the wave so it increases or it decreases or it remains same or none of the above option is correct so that's what they are asking so let me draw this quickly then it will make more sense so let's say this is the this is your okay let's go first this is your shock wave angle so this is beta this is m1 this is m n1 this is m t1 okay and this is exactly perpendicular 90 degree now this is your theta the flow deflection it should be parallel to the flow deflection so this will be m2 this is m n2 and this will be m t2 tangential component and this angle will be shock wave angle minus flow deflection angle i hope this is clear you know this very well so they have asked the tangential mach number as the flow passes through the wave so this is your oblique shock wave or wave front or you call it as a wave all are the same too so different book use different notations and symbols so okay fine so i know my velocity tangential velocity is going to can you tell me tangential velocity is remain same tangential velocity remains same but not mach number i already told you this mach numbers doesn't remain same it gets decreases why because there is a difference in the temperature right there is a difference in the temperature hence my mach number changes this is not same because across the shock wave my temperature changes hence my temp mach number changes so that means it decreases okay because uh, if you see this is given by uh, vt2 gamma r t2 so i know across the oblique shock wave this is t1 t2 t2 increases right similarly p2 increases so if t2 is increasing that means this quantity is increasing then mt2 will be decreasing that's the funda because it is inversely proportional to the temperature so if this thing is increasing then it has to decrease 
so option b is correct in this okay i hope this is clear let's go to the next question okay now i have a numerical uh, it is msq question so you can expect this kind of questions also in exam okay now let's solve this question okay so let's read the question first consider in a supersonic flow of m2 uh, sorry m equals to 2 pressure is 180 m temperature is 280 kelvin so this is flowing this is approaching flowing this flow is deflected at a compression corner through 20 degree so it is getting deflected by 20 degree i'll explain you in a bit calculate mach pressure temperature t naught behind the resulting oblique shock wave which of the following is are correct so from these options which of the following are correct you need to answer those i hope this is clear so let's first draw the situation what is the situation is it is so if i just go back if i copy this okay copy this okay i can do this also right yeah okay very good so i have these quantities now so let me erase this this is not required it becomes clumsy okay this is m1 so if you see this guys so first let me draw the uh, this is also required you cannot skip this so this is operating this shock wave is formed because of the 20 degree deflection so this is let's say 20 degree and because of 20 degree this shock wave formation this shock wave has formed okay i hope this is the situation so can you tell me what will be this uh, angle can you tell me what will be this angle this angle will be exactly 20 degree why this angle will be exactly 20 degree why let's say you are having this kind of uh, this kind of wedge and flow is flowing here it always must follow the flow tendency okay it cannot be penetrate cannot penetrate inside the body or it cannot do like this no this is not going to happen so it always follow the flow tendency so whatever this slope you are having that this streamline should also have the same slope that means so same inclination this is also theta this will be also going to theta this will be minus theta i hope these points are clear let me let me take this to the different side okay now now my motive is to calculate the mach number pressure temperature and t naught behind the resulting oblique shock wave uh, now it is msq you need to be careful to get a full marks out of it okay just a bit okay okay fine now let me write the given data first so it will make more sense m2 uh, so sorry m1 is given as a 2 which is supersonic p1 okay p1 given as a 180m t1 given as a 288 kelvin they have said the they have given these values okay from there i am writing so if you take this okay, let me draw it here this is the oblique shock wave okay now they are asking what is m2 what is p2 what is t2 what is t naught 2 that's what they are asking so i know this zone data i need to compute this zone data i hope you understood now let's try to solve this now guys you must be knowing the oblique shock wave calculation which we have done already let me take take it to the different side okay okay fine now if you see you can uh, so what i will do i need to compute m2 right so i need this m2 value how i can get this so first i will calculate mn1 from this using m1 so okay fine okay nice so so i think they have forget to given this shock wave angle in the question so shock wave angle is uh, yeah they have forget this is 53.42 degree please consider this value guys the shock wave angle otherwise we will not be able to calculate shock wave angle okay <coughs> okay so m1 i know beta i know i can compute m and 1 from here right if i know m and when m and 1 this is acting as a normal shock wave 
I can use the relation of normal shock wave and I can calculate MN2 from here, right? Now, I know this beta, I know this theta using again trigonometry. Using again, using again trigonometry, I can do calculate this M2. I hope you understood the road map. So, let's do this also. This is important. So, this is again 90 degree. So, okay. So, MN1 is given by, you can do this M1 sin beta. This shock wave is a weak shock wave. Guys. So, let me do this. This is weak shock wave. Weak of the shock wave. So, again, you can do this MN1 will be M1, you can use 2. Uh, beta, you can use 53.42. If you do this, <coughs> pardon me. If you do this, you will get this value as a, okay, okay, you will get this value as a 1.606. Please check this. This must be supersonic because this component is normal component which is normal shock wave and it is facing this this streamline is facing this oblique shock wave as a normal shock wave so this must be supersonic again now you can do mn2 calculation this the formula is you must remember this don't rely on table and when while doing practice i'll insist you to use the formula not the table it will make you remember it while forget exam so if you do calculate this mn2 uh, okay mn2 i have calculated mn2 don't forget to take this square in last lecture i forget so please pardon me for that zero point this o okay let me write here m2 is 0 0.666 oh sorry sorry this is mn2 i hope this is clear Okay, this is MN2 quantity. Now, what I will do? I can do this. M2 I can calculate. MN2 divided by sine beta minus theta. So, M N2 you know, uh, beta you know, theta you know, you can do this calculation. And it will be, uh, do I have? Yes, I have this. So, this will be 1.21. So, your M2 will be 1.21. I hope it is clear. So, if you can see this M1 was 2, now this M2 got decelerated and it is sti still supersonic and it is 1.21. I told you across weak oblique shock wave, downstream Mach number remains supersonic. It does not convert into the subsonic, but in case of strong oblique shock wave, your upstream Mach number will get converted into the subsonic Mach number. Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay, fine. Okay, so we have calculated the one task is completed for M2. Now the now you can use this ratio equations, guys. You can do this. This becomes MN1 gamma minus 1 gamma plus 1. Now you cannot use M1 quantity here. This should be MN1 because this formula is defined for normal shock wave, not for oblique shock wave. Okay, so use the corresponding uh, Mach number, which is normal component of Mach number. So if you do calculate this, this value, I have done this. This is nothing but 2.82. Now they have asked us to calculate the downstream pressure. So P2 will be, P1 is already 1 atm. So multiply this, you will get this as a 2.82 atm. So this is the static pressure, the downstream of the oblique shock wave. So I hope this is also clear. You can also do calculation for temperature ratios. I have already done please use this uh, please do the do by formula this I have done this already so this will be 1.392 and T2 multi one multiplied to the right hand side which is 288 Kelvin you will get this value as a uh, T2 yeah T2 is a 400 I might do some mistake please verify these values guys so this is your T2 which is temperature at the exit of oblique shock at the downstream of the oblique shock wave now i need to calculate this t naught right so please remember this and i already told you that that my t naught one will be equals to t naught two across oblique shock wave across standing normal shock wave right so this is fine i think and you can do calculate this this is simply this is easy because m1 is given so you can do this m1 2 t1 288 kelvin can simply calculate T01 from here. This will be 518.4 Kelvin. 
so i hope it is clear now you can mark the option so mac number we have calculated which is exactly equal so this is correct and pressure we have calculated this is so this option is also correct then temperature we have calculated temperature i got this is a four four hundred point eight so this is not correct and t naught if you see t naught we have computed which is exactly equal to this so this option is also correct so option a a b and d is correct this if you solve this you can get easily two marks the given part so that this is the point i was having this was the questions i was having for oblique shock wave so if you having any doubt you can ask and uh, this kind of question you can expect in your gate exam they will not be asking to compute this whole quantity but they can ask yeah you can expect this kind of msq question for if they uh, make heavy uh, heavy the gate uh, gas dynamic subject so okay i think this much is enough for oblique shock wave numerical now your oblique sh your, now your all the i think all the thi uh, all the concept which we have covered is uh, i have covered the all the numerical for those now it is enough for this in the next lecture we will meet with the uh, cd nozzle with the effect of back pressure okay so let's meet in the next lecture guys bye bye